Hi, I'm here today with Matt Deppers, a senior design engineer here at Tormach, and uh, Matt's going to show us a, kind of a, some product development that we've, uh, we've been working on for a little bit here. So, uh, Matt, why don't you show us what you got? That's cool. Do it again. Very neat. What is it? We have ourselves here a power draw bar. And why would you even need a power draw bar? Uh, well, the obvious reasons are uh, fast and simple tool changes. Uh, no draw bar to tighten uh, or loosen, and uh, it makes uh, tool changes very quick. There's also uh, additional reasons that uh, a automatic tool changer requires some form of power draw bar to function. So this would be a stepping stone in that direction. Neat. Um, could we? Uh, could you take us for a tour, kind of the apparatus, and show us uh, a little bit about the design requirements? Certainly. Uh, well, here obviously, here's the control pendant. Uh, you have a, a, a trigger and then a latching mechanism. Uh, as well. Here's the inside. Basic structure is you have a two stack pneumatic cylinder. You've got uh, the draw bar is in here, and then you have uh, some Belleville washers. And then the other critical element in this design is this plate here and this flange here. This flange rotates with the spindle. And so when the power draw bar activates, it's actually working its resultant forces off that flange. The reason for that is it keeps all the loads off the spindle bearings itself. Let me just show really quick. So the cylinder pressurizes, pushes down the cylinder rod onto the top of the draw bar, and then the reaction force is coming through mounting plate down here and pushing up on the spindle flange here. So this whole unit is essentially floating until you put pressure on it and then it's like a syringe pinching and compressing those bell bills. And we have a standard uh, Tormach TTS collet in, the, uh, in our R8 spindle right now and when you compress the draw bar down, push the draw bar down, it causes that collet to release and then you take when you're off the button, you drop pressure, the bell bills expand, pulling the draw bar up, pulling the TTS collet up with the tool holder. The whole thing swings out of the way, right? Yeah, while well, you have all this mechanism in here, uh, you still need to be able to do belt changes. And so that was a critical element to the design, is how do you add all this mechanism in an area you have to get your fingers into. So our system easily pivots out of the way, so you can still access your attention method, mechanism, and then you can still get your hands in here onto the belt itself. If that's not enough, the whole unit will easily pull out and place back in. You just simply pivot it back into place, away you go. Why the uh, air over air cylinder? Well, there are a number of different ways uh, you could do it. You could do uh, straight hydraulics, you could use an air hydraulic, over hydraulics, uh, or use air. Uh, we felt uh, while hydraulic systems can be more compact uh, for the given load they're applying, uh, they also add uh, in an extra element. Uh, we like to keep things simple, so we figured a double cylinder pneumatic only was the best way to go. So really this is two cylinders pancaked on top of each other, about a four inch bore cylinder and uh, they're, they're linked mechanically through the rod. We pressurize, you can see here, we pressurize both ends of the, for the downforce. So that's essentially getting two four-inch four cylinders pushing on the same point. And uh, it was a simpler setup as opposed to an arrow over oil setup. One less media you have to deal with and still fit into our working envelope of the 1100. Okay, cool. Uh, what's the, uh, what's the, uh pressure requirement? Well, we're looking at about uh, between 100 and 120 PSI of air pressure. Uh, that adds up to about uh, a little bit better than 2,500 pounds of axial force developed by the tool changer. 
So you imagine we're right up in that range for tension on the drawbar itself. Uh, for lighter cutting applications, you probably don't need nearly that amount of force. But for heavy, heavy cutting, you know, roughing end mills, high helix cutters, that sort, uh, they need the extra drawbar force to keep the tool from slipping out. We've been able to test this setup using a half inch roughing end mill, cutting through one inch aluminum bar and a single pass without the cutter coming out. Very neat. Let's see it in action one more time. All right. Great. Thanks, Matt. No problem.